Hey everyone. Thanks for joining us here today for the Wings of Talk webinar. Um, so I was kind of in a little bit of a rush this morning, so I'd certainly like to get myself grounded and settled in here and would like to offer that with you guys too. Um, so we'll just do the Trinity breath and go right into the heart space. So again, it's just picturing within your physical heart, your light, your fire, and just visualizing that going straight down into the earth. However that is for you, make this your own. I send my light down to that crystal sun, that heart of Mother Earth. And then we breathe in that energy in a breath. Breathing that energy up through the feet and right into the heart. And next we connect with source, creator, God, soul, central sun, however you see and say that. And we breathe in that energy, that unconditional healing, loving energy. Breathing that right into the heart. And then that third breath of breathing in from both earth and sky, bringing those energies into their heart and mixing those with you, earth, sky, and you. So we take that third breath. And then that light goes both up and down. So we stand as a column of light that is in the heart, grounded and connected. All right, so the wings of talk. This is an exciting tool. So as with the webinars, we'll start with some of the, the physical aspects, the physical creations, um, the creation story of them. And then we'll move into working with them on the energetics and what they're doing energetically. And then if I haven't, covered everything you guys need to need to know for your curiosity please start asking questions um so the wings have talk this is simply a miniature starburst now the starburst is something that was um bill reed was the one who actually named the tool the starburst the specific eight timed uh tool even though here they all look like they're the same measurements these are each cut to a very specific measure. Now, when, when Bill Reed made the first um, starburst, he, was, he got his information from Simon Balaboa. Now, Simon, he's an architect in Colorado, and that's where um, Slim and Pals were all right there in Colorado doing this work in the beginning. Now, what Simon showed was that there is a very specific geometry that has those eight points. And they were taking those specific lengths to put into that eight pointed geometry. Um, and those lengths come from the great pyramid that they were using. I believe they were the sacred cubit and the black cubit, Riemann cubit, not sure. But those very first starbursts were something that they'd always have to put a tensor ring with the starburst because otherwise the starburst was just a neutral frequency emitter. It could be used for amplifying anything. Good, bad, ugly, beautiful, doesn't matter. So it was an amplifier. It was a frequency emitter. Because again, when you cut something to those very specific measurements there, these guys are all cut to that within that hundred thousandth of a millimeter or hundred hundredth of a millimeter in length. And those create the frequencies. And so when you put we cut two frequencies. This one here has the standard Teotihuacan unit, the harmony ring, and the golden fire. And so when Bill and company were making their first ones, they were using like that sacred cubit for one measurement across and then the Riemann cubit for the other one. Um, and then they were just basically frequency emitters. And we were making the starburst too there in the beginning uh, when we first started. And again, we always had to have a ring around it. And then I was guided to the starburst, the keys. And when we make any of these specific uh, tools like this, the starburst or the keys, we have to make them with steel. So everything is electroplated afterwards, 
but steel was the only thing that we could find that would hold those frequencies. Copper wasn't doing it. The brass wasn't doing it. Um, so we used steel. And you, you can see on this particular starburst, each one of these tines is cut to that measure. And then they all eight come together right in the center. And then two, um, it was a, such a thing where we used to have to um, use a dowsing uh, a pendulum to find the energy flow within each one of these rods so that the energy flow was all coming to the center. Uh, since then, we've, we've found that we can use consciousness um, intention from the heart space and shift that energy flow, shift the way the piezoelectric flows within these. So now we don't use a pendulum to find the energy flow and keep them all centered so that they go to the center. We can use that intention from the heart space during the creation process and bring all the energy flows to the center. So with, um, with again, with all those original keys and starbursts, they could be used because they did not have an etheric template. They could be used as just basically transmitters and that's why they always had the ring. Now, once we had the starburst, again, it was after Bill passed on, Bill Reed, when he passed on, I believe it was um, very early in 2018 there, we, um, I, I just felt that we needed to remake the starburst and then also to help get the information out there about him, you know, just kind of an honoring. And anymore, Slim and Bill are both <laughs> working together and they, they've kind of helped to create the regeneration ring. Um, and I'm sure they had a hand in this whole thing too. Um, so when we first started making, or when we started making the Starburst again, this first new line of Starburst, what Brenda and I did was we worked on the etheric template for the Starburst. Now the Starburst is again, that larger version. Um, and I'm sure you've seen them or maybe have them. So that Starburst Brenda and I worked and created the etheric template for it. So when we created the etheric template for the starburst, um, very interesting. We, we were seeing it go back in time and overlaying over top of where all the starbursts were, that particular geometry had been used. Um, that particular ge geometry, as Simon Balboa brought out, was that it was used on the breastplate of the armor of Hercules that the gods made for him. It was used, it was tattooed on the chest of pre-Egyptian initiates. Um, it, it, it was is an ancient symbol. And so we went through and we overlaid the etheric template back in time over all those symbols. Because we always want to make sure that anything that we create isn't based on or connected to something that may not be in the highest and best good for right now. And so after that was done, the third template and the overlaying, we no longer needed to put a ring around the starburst because it had the third template. Then it could only be used for anything that is in the highest and best good that's healthful and beneficial as determined by the higher soul. So it became a beneficial tool to where um, you couldn't use it for anything negative. Um, so the starburst then, again, it has the golden fire and it has the um, the standard TO2 econ unit, the harmony. So that are that is the two measures that we use in the wands as well. So the starburst anymore is bringing through the, the things that the golden fire and light wands do. Um, it's just kind of bringing them through more automatic but yet, you know, when we're using the wands and we are using them with our conscious heart-based intent, we can do a lot more than we can with just things that are sitting there automatically. So, wings of talk. We made the mini starburst. We usually don't take on, um, you know, people have requests all the time for tools. We usually don't do requests because we're so busy just making tools. For everybody um, but we had some of the original some of the small starbursts laying around and so I was like okay we'll just we'll play with that since we have all these little starbursts out that we made in the beginning when we were first starting to work with um, the new starburst platform from from Bill Reed after he passed 
So I was like, okay, well, this harmonic creation field trio that we've been working with, which has the golden fire, the harmony, and the regeneration is such a phenomenal field. So we put a regeneration ring around that mini starburst and holy smokes, it just shifted it because the regeneration rings are taking everything to its higher octave, to its higher um, aspect. And so when we put the regeneration ring on here, it just amplified everything. So when I first did this and it was laying on the counter, um, the starburst itself is connecting down into the earth. It's connecting to the, the grids, the geomagnetic grids. Um, it's doing clearing. It'll move those even waterways. It will either clear those or move waterways. Um, geomagnetic lines will either clear those or move those around the space. And so the starburst itself was always working within the earth. But then it's also working, it's more like a bubble and a dome that goes on top of the earth and under the earth. And so then it's also working like the golden fire does, like the harmony does. It's doing the clearing, the activating. Um, people who have really severe geopathic um, portal vortex issues within their homes, it was usually the starburst that we would suggest. So I was watching what the starburst was doing. Then we put the regeneration ring around it. And to me, it just shot straight down into the earth and up. It created this giant column. So there first there was that bubble, that dome over the earth, dome under the earth, so a bubble. And then it was also a column of light. Um, and this is what I drew the other day of how I saw it. I was drawing it for a friend. It just happened to be on the desk was the green is like the the surface of the earth. Then there's the um, the wings of talk, the ring and the starburst in the center. And so it's creating that dome and disregard the colors. I usually see it as more of a whitish, goldish, fuzzy energy. However this stuff presents and however you see it is absolutely perfect. Um, and you might not even see it like this because we all perceive things a little bit differently. So this is how I saw it though, is that we have that bubble there, but then that upshoot and that downshoot, it just kind of looked like that, kind of looked like a saucer shape, kind of like a Merkaba does. A lot of people who see the Merkaba see it in a saucer shape like that. But anyway, that is how I saw the field of the Wings of Talk, it is very similar to that. So when you do your visualization and imagination when using this tool and we get into that part, um, you can use that as a reference or you can just use a standard column of light or a bubble. It really doesn't matter how it presents to you and how you see it. Um, <clears throat> so let's see. Okay, so continuing on with the creation story. So basically when I saw this guy doing what it was doing, um, I called Brenda and I talked to her about it because <laughs> This thing is the same structure, energetic structure, that I was seeing for the past few months before that when I was really starting to work with these blue beans. Now, these blue beans, um, we just call them the blues. You know, there's so many different beans out there. They're not the blue avians. They're, they're I don't know who they are. Um, but these guys, they are more of like a plasma being. Um, you don't see facial features. And they have these really sharp tipped wings. So they're these blue beans, plasma beans with wings. And, um, you know, and I don't see fingers or toes. You know, it's, it's a very humanoid figure. Um, and they're tall, slender. So I had been working with these guys. Brendan and I actually were doing some work one day. Um, I don't even remember some big grid work and we had a ball of light, a golden light right down below the earth. And it was kind of, again, a dome right above and right below the earth. So we had that ball of light right there at the surface of the earth. It went down into the earth. And then I saw that geometric form that more of a teardrop up and a teardrop down. And then those blue beans came in the blue winged beans and they were assisting us in in the work that we were doing that day and i started working with them i started to create 
that same energy field and ask them to come in to assist. Because again, when we're working from the heart space and we are working out there with, with that intent from the heart, only those that are in the highest and best good come within that field that you connect with when you're connecting from the heart. So we always trust when we are working with, with beings. And interesting enough is that Brenda has been working with this master healer, the blues named Talk, for I, a couple of years, I'm gonna guess, maybe a year. Um, and talk this master healer of the blues sometimes when brenda was working on things that were um you know just a really tough issue she would call in um one of her guides and it would just be talk this master healer of the blues phenomenal i mean i've had work done with him too from brenda and just phenomenal stuff working with this being and so that is when we figured out that these blue beans that I had been seeing are the same as talk. Uh, these guys, they are all master beings. And from what we feel and understand is that they've always been here. They've just been in the background and it's just been more time now as we've reached different frequencies and vibrations as humanity, as earth, as this physical reality as we reach certain frequencies and vibrations, then they were able to step in and offer their assistance. And again, you know, we've checked these guys out. We feel um, very heart-based beings that are working with our soul. So that's the thing too, is that a lot of these beings, you know, they, they don't really care for what the human intention is because we have such a uh, a smaller perspective, a smaller view on the bigger picture. So they work with the soul. And so it is soul to soul work that we do. And again, with the regeneration ring, that is, and these fields that we work with and the work that we do, we are able to be more in alignment with that source soul creation energy. And so then we are able to work with these blue beings in a, you know, right here and right now. Um, so anyway, wings of talk, we were trying to figure out what the heck to call this creation. Um, you know, we were asking, okay, who are you guys and what do you call yourselves? Nobody would step forward. And that's when we were like, oh, wow, that is the, the same beings as talk. And so, you know, he was just laughingly says wings of talk. And we sat with it for a couple of days because, you know, to them, it really doesn't matter. Um. We sat with the name for a couple of days and, you know, wings of talk just uh, stuck. So that's what we call this guy. Now, when, when we were first seeing that field, when we were first seeing that field and that was being created by this, and we saw the, and I, I recognized that as that same field that I, we'd been working with those blue beans. So I was like, Hey, do you think that, we could ask those blue beings to come in to be of assistance as well. And I just felt all of a sudden, I felt them all around me and right up in my face and they were just all right there. And Brenda talked to them, you know, and, and of course she's, she's very nice about everything. And, you know, one of the heart, most heart centered people I know. And, um, you know, if she just asked them that, you know, just said, Hey, it would be an honor if you guys would be able to come in to assist in the highest and best good, work with the higher soul self of the people that are within that field, with the people that are utilizing these tools, and um, you know, if they wish, and if it's in alignment with the soul. And so they agreed. So basically, whenever we have the Wings of Talk disc, it is doing everything that the Starburst does but it is creating that field to where we can work with these master blue beans. And that's it is that they are not just like talk who is a master healer of the blues. These guys are varied. I mean, these guys are master everything. So, I mean, there might be one of the beans that is a master grid worker or, um, someone who does different styles of clearing work or, um, you know, the imagination is wide open on what these beings can do to assist. 
So working with the wings of talk, you don't need to work with the blue beans for this to work. I mean, if this is out of your realm, fine. You can take this guy, you can sit at some place within the home. It's creating that, that bubble around the home. And it's about a hundred yards across innately. It can be smaller, larger. Um, no, not a hundred yards. It's more like about 150, 120 feet across is what I see it for myself when it's just innately there. So it's about the size of a home. Um, well, bigger than a home. So it covers your home. And so you can sit this in your home and forget it. And it's going to be working with the electromagnetics, the 5G millimeter wave, because it's got the, um, the golden fire in it. Um, it's going to be working with dense consciousness, dense energies, portal vortexes, geopathic, geomagnetic lines, um, waterways, all that fun stuff. It's going to be doing the work with all of that in the highest and best good. But we can utilize that space uh, to do so much more than just let it do its innate thing. So again, it's creating that field to where those blue beans will come in and you can ask for that assistance. Um, simple as that, you know, you don't, all you need to do is, is have a thought is have it, um, you know, again, going into the heart space, taking the three breaths, go into the heart that way, whatever we are doing and whatever we perceive as something that we need to work on, we're doing it from the heart space, not from here out of fear or having to see things in a certain way. Because again, when we're working and operating from here, we have such a lower perspective. So when we go into the heart space, that is where we begin to have that higher perspective, um, that of this higher soul self. And so we go into the heart space and we can ask for the healing, the clearing, the working on situations, um, whatever it is. And when we're doing the asking from the heart space, it is our soul up here doing the work with these beings on our highest and best good. And that may look different from right here. So, you know, if we're like, well, I want to heal some kind of a family relationship, you know, and we're here with it and we want to see it a certain way and we ask for the work from here, it may not be exactly how we see it from here. And so that's just part of that whole new paradigm of being in the heart space, surrendering to our soul and trusting the outcome. Because that is when we become powerful beings and that's when the magic and miracles take place. So, wings of talk. How to use this guy. So if any of you guys have seen some of the social media stuff that I've been posting, I take the wings of talk as I take a lot of tools and they're kind of like the garden gnomes. Wherever I go traveling around, I'll take a picture of this like up next to a cell phone tower or an obelisk um, or an electrical transformation station or a water, you know, um, uh, uh, the 5G stuff or the 4G stuff. And I shouldn't mention the 5G stuff as much. We're gonna get into that in some future videos because there's a lot of validity to the 5G, but there's also a whole lot of fear to it. And it's not widespread and it's not on every tower. And anyway, whole other subject, but you can use this for, even if you feel that you have a 5G tower in your backyard, doesn't matter if it's 5G, 4G, 3G, anchor light into it. Um, so you guys seen me maybe posting these pictures of these guys like next to an electrical transformer station. So what I'm doing when I'm going around and I am not leaving one of these wings of talk tools at each of these places, but I am leaving that column of light. So as you guys know too about some of the work that we do here is we create the columns of light and we use, you know, and you can just do consciousness work. That's what this is all about. But you can also use the wands. So we've done the, the seminars on the golden fire and light wands for anchoring columns of light. Um, and then I also have that reclamationearth.com website where I teach you how to do columns of light, the heart space, um, activations, all that fun stuff. But the point is, is that we do this work through consciousness, um, through conscious intent. So 
when we want to leave this column of light, let's say at an electrical substation someplace, when you leave the energetics of this there, it will travel on those power lines. It will connect into all those homes that feed from that electrical substation. Um, that's the same with communication towers. It, when you leave the energetics of this there, it broadcasts it out on those waves. Same with municipal water tanks. You leave this energetic there and it flows through the water with the water. How to leave that there? Very simple. Visualization, intention from the heart space. So we just use this kind of like what we use the wands for is just something for our attention and focus onto. You're standing there at the electrical transmission station. Just visualize that this is laying on the ground out there, right in the middle of it, is creating that bubble of light that goes on the earth and under the earth. So it's a dome, a dome, a bubble, a bubble of light. Within that bubble it is also grounding and connecting. So then there's that two-way column of light through that bubble. Again, if this helps you to visualize, you can sure use that to visualize however you want to see this. So we have the bubble, the columns of light that are grounding and connecting. And that's it. When you're doing that, you already have the intention that you are leaving that there. And that will stay there, that space, that field, and that column, that field will stay there for as long as is needed, um, which could be infinitely. Um, then within that space, you will find all those blue winged beings, all those master light plasma beings will be right there within that space. And so you can ask for them to, to assist. You can just let it go and just let it be. Um, you know, again, like if you're anchoring it into a cell phone tower, we can't be in fear with it. We need to be in the heart space. So when we create that column of light there, like let's say on a cell phone tower, and it's just your intention that you are transforming those signals. So all this stuff that we do, it's, it's not like the old ways of trying to create and manifest from here and having to think of things very specifically like, okay, I want to manifest this like this, like this, you know, and that was the old ways that a lot of people were trying to create manifest was being very specific on your intentions, things like that. We're not working with intentions from the head where intentions are from the heart and those are completely different. So when we put that column of light there, it is already our heart based intention that this is in the highest and greatest good and it's doing all this wonderful stuff for everybody that it touches. So once you don't, don't go up into the head and try to make things specific when you're putting these columns of light, when you're putting these fields, go from the heart, set that field right there in that electrical transformation station. It does the work from the heart. You're standing there in front of a water tower. Just visualize putting this right there on the top of the tower, the base of the tower. Don't go into the mental about it. Make it simple and easy. Place the wings of talk disc right there. Watch it turn into a bubble, connect and ground, then let it go. Cause it's already your intention that that is going to stay there. And then that will be held. So this is just, it's an easy, to me, it's an easier way to create the columns of light. So sometimes I'll find that a column of light just feels better in some places. And some places I'm more drawn to use the wings of talk and put that there. Um, so to me using this and to me personally, just because I do a lot of the, the clearing work throughout the, throughout the environment, throughout this third density reality, it's, it's the clearing work that I do. And so that's how I use the tool the most is the clearing and transmission work, um, you know, in all those places that we've discussed, cell phone towers, waterways, um, electrical transmission state uh, stations, all of that. Um, 
but you can use this in a more of a personal way too so that when you have that wings of talk and that column of light right here you can work within that column i sleep with these one of these in bed at night too um between this and my my uh taurus that i sleep with um you know i'll use them for different things so i find that i wake up a lot holding on to this and it's i've been holding it for a few hours and my whole arm is just buzzy numb um, so I have to kind of stick it under my pillow sometimes. So I'm not grabbing it in the middle of the night and waking up with a buzzy arm. But, um, basically what I, what I'm saying is that you can use it on the physical. So if you have something going on, you can certainly place it on the physical spot too, and do the work from there and just let it do the work as just a, a more of a condensed refined energy tool but really the true power and potency of this is in the field that it creates um so let's see i see we might have some questions popped up here and would love for you guys to go ahead and ask questions you can do it either under the questions or under the chat here um let's see i've learned before that when using a tensor ring to hug surround an activator generator would turn off its field. Does this not apply to a starburst like the wings of talk? Okay, so um, the question kind of refers to when Slim Sperling was making the harmonizers. And when he would make a harmonizer, he would send a ring along with it. And so basically the harmonizer that, you know, it's kind of like a spherical object. This is what I wear on my wrist. This is tensor field generator, not a harmonizer. I got a harmonizer around here somewhere, but we don't we don't make them. But um, basically, you'd have a harmonizer, which is that spherical object. You would take a ring and you would place it around that harmonizer. And when you were placing it, you'd have the soft intention, the belief that it would contain that field, and that is what would happen. So when Slim taught people to use a single ring and place over that energetic object that radiates out that it was the intention of putting the ring around it to contain it so that it wasn't radiating and then that's what happens so if you use your harmonizer and or an activator that we make or a tensor field generator and you put a ring around it you can have the intention of containing that field or you can have the intention of amplifying that field because whenever we add another ring to something, it's increasing mm, power and potency by around 23%. Um, power and potency are never the right words for it, but it's, it's increasing that power and potency of the field by about 23%. So really when you put the ring around the starburst, it's amplifying it instead of containing it. Um, so hopefully that answers the question there and, um, yeah, does anybody have any other questions with the wings of talk? So again, steel core, the only thing that we've found so far that will hold the energetics, then it's electroplated. So quite the process on making these little guys. Again, when we figure our, our cost on these, it is time, energy, materials. So this little guy here, we started out, they were like 144 bucks, and then it got to be to where we found an easier way to do it. So we were able to take 22 off of there. So currently they're at 122 bucks as of August 14th, 2019. Um, so anyway, um, somebody's mentioning about clearing entities. So yeah, that, okay. <laughs> Thank you for making this comment because that was actually another one of the motivations to create this tool in the first place was that um, I have two friends who do clearing work and they see these beings as demons. And demons is just 
uh, it's it's a cultural perception of, of what we call as an entity. An entity is a pretty broad category. We call entities non-incarnate beings that are not working in the highest and best good is just simply what we refer to entities as. And so um, we see entities of all flavors and varieties. And so some of them do present to us as demons, but it's not within our fear category. So we usually don't try to present like that. So people who have had these um, beings that are attached to entities that are attached to people and to homes. And so they, so my two friends, both in different sides of the country were like, hey, we really need a tool to easily clear these entities because you know they're getting into doing the work with more simplicity lot less ceremony, a lot less mental. So that's what we originally, I originally was intending this guy to be is, is that this was an amplified starburst that you could send to the person. They place it on their heart or anywhere. It goes in, it works with your higher soul self. It works on clearing any soul contracts that you may have with this entity, with this other being. Then it also works with that entity that's in the field and does the activations and everything for it, connecting it because it has a divine spark. It has a soul spark and it is a part of divinity. So it activates that soul spark. It is reconnected to its higher soul self. It drops its agendas and goes. So when you're trying to clear an entity, that may be attached to a person, that's what happens. You put this on yourself, in your field, sleep with it, sit with it. Um, if the entity is ready to go, as soon as this comes in the mailbox and it's on its way, the entity is already going. Some of them that are a little bit more difficult, you just sit with it and it'll do the work. It will clear the, that entity attachment. And then if it is something within the home, where we see a lot of times these entities are connected to a portal vortex, which is an intersecting of geomagnetic lines that creates a vortex of energy. That's where portals can be. A lot of people have these portals under their homes and this is clearing the geomagnetic lines, it's clearing the portals and it's clearing the entities that may be using that portal. And again, it's like the golden fire and light wands because that golden fire and light wand is also anchored into the starburst and into this, obviously. And that will transcend time, space, dimensions, realities. So it'll clear them. Um, it'll clear all the ones that have come out. So anyway, that is as far as for um, the question about clearing entities. Again, got to be in the heart space. Don't want to fall into fear. Um, nothing can truly hurt you. So let's see. Will it clear entities from next door within the 100 foot radius? Okay, so that's another thing with the, the innate radius of this guy. Um, you can expand that out. Um, you know, so for me, you know, like when I'm doing columns of light, it only seems like 20 feet across unless I expand it out. Like my sister, hers are just like huge. Um, so basically it's all within our beliefs and our intentions when we are creating those fields and when we are witnessing those fields, but also to, if you are working with like, let's say you have an entity attachment next door, you can place this with your intent right next door. That is the beautiful thing about all the tools that we create is we do not violate the free will of anybody. So anybody that's within their this field, if it is in their highest and best good to have this entity attachment or to have cancer or to have this or that, it's not going to interfere with that. Um, it'll hold the space for everything that is in the highest and best good in accordance with their soul and their soul path. So you can just put this right next door. Um, like all the tools, we see this shifting neighborhoods, you know, like the tensor field generators, the golden fire generators, where they expand out across an entire neighborhood. 
man, we get so many reports of how everything shifts within a neighborhood, especially if you really see that disparity, you know, like if you have big parties and drug dealers and everything else going on um, and drag races, you know, a lot of people see all of that just shifting. And so, yeah, so the concern was somebody next door, possible entity attachments, just visualize this again, going into the heart space, trying to stay out of here, not trying to fix and do stuff. We are simply offering this with love for their highest and greatest good as determined by them and not by us. So simply dropping it over there. All right. Any more questions? Hey, thank you. Yeah, and, and thank you guys for, for being here. Um, I'm seeing a lot of people that I know, so that's really, really fantastic. Um, you know, and, and I really do appreciate you guys following us and, and taking the time to come on live here. Um, and two, we're trying to make different times um, and different days to where we can, where other people can access this because we have people all over the world that are using these tools. And, you know, I'm in such gratitude and in such awe of, of all the feedback that we get. Um, love for you guys to check out the testimonials page. Many of you guys have probably put testimonials there, but it is just flipping amazing to see what people are doing with the tools and how it is changing lives, how it is shifting environments. Um, <laughs> just great stuff. So Wings of Talk, phenomenal tool. Again, with all of our tools, they are quantum. You can actually just access this right now. You can, as a matter of fact, let's play real fast before we're done here then. We have the Wings of Talk. Imagine this sitting right in front of you, right there on your desk, right there in your car, wherever you're at watching or listening. Taking those three breaths into the heart space, connecting with earth, connecting with source, soul, creator, being in the heart. Just visualizing this wings of talk sitting right there in front of you. It too is creating that column of light that's grounding, connecting, that bubble of light expanding out around it into your space. And all those blue beans, the blue winged beans that are just there to be of any assistance that your soul may need. And you can start asking for the things that you need from your human. The healing, the clearing, the understanding, the knowing. This is also a space of all knowing. And it's a tangible space. And that's the attunement to the wings of talk. Now you know it. You don't need the physical tool, but we appreciate if you do get the physical tool. It supports us in the endeavors that we do, supports all of our employees and and uh, the expansion of, of everything. So, all right. Thank you all. Appreciate you being here. We'll see you next time.